This week, we're going to look at solving polynomial equations and graphing polynomial functions. We've already studied two kinds of polynomial functions. Straight lines, which either had a positive slope or a negative slope, or parabolas that were either an opening up parabola or an opening down parabola, like a string hung between two points or a water fountain. Now we're going to look at higher degree polynomials. Straight lines have the form y is equal to, or the function of x is equal to, ax plus b. Sometimes we call that am, so that it was talking about the slope. But that number tells the slope of the line. If that number is positive, the line is going up as we read from the left to the right. Quadratic functions have the form y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. In this case, when a is positive, this leading coefficient is going to be an opening up parabola, and when that a is negative, it's going to be an opening down parabola. Notice another similarity in these two. In a straight line, this constant coefficient b tells where the y-intercept is. In this equation, in, in this function, the constant c tells us where the y-intercept is on, uh, on the parabola. Now as we begin to look at more complicated functions of higher degree, it's going to be, we're going to run out of letters of the alphabet. This is a popular scheme for studying polynomials. The coefficients are all labeled by, by a's with the subscript. For example, if we were looking at a first degree polynomial, we would call that a1x plus a0. That would be like this first degree polynomial that we were looking at earlier. A uh, second degree polynomial would be a2x squared plus a1x plus a0. So what we used to call ax squared plus bx plus c, we'd call a2x squared plus a sub 1x plus a0. And now you can see how you could look at a third degree polynomial or a fourth degree polynomial. Now in any of these functions, if we wanted to know where the function crossed the y-axis, that would happen when the x value is 0. Notice that every point on the y-axis has an x value of 0. So when the x value is 0, all that's left is that constant term. The constant term is always the y-intercept. So if we're looking at a polynomial function in general, uh, and we're interested in where this, the graph of this particular function crosses the x-axis, that would happen when x is 0. And if x is 0, all of these terms go away. The only thing that's left is that constant term. On the other hand, the uh, x-intercept occurs when the y-value is 0. So if we wanted to find the x-value of the x-intercept, it would be simply a matter of solving this equation. We could subtract the constant term from each side and then divide by the slope. That would mean that x would be equal to a minus a0 divided by a1. We took quite a bit of time discussing how to solve a quadratic equation. Usually we call this an a, b, and a c. And you know that if ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, then x is equal to a minus b, plus or minus, there's two answers here, b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. And uh, we learned how to do that by completing the square. It was kind of higher degree polynomials are discussed in the handout. Now, two very useful things to know about graphing polynomial functions. One is the bending rule. The bending rule states that an nth degree polynomial has n minus 1 bends. In the two polynomial functions that you've studied most, the first degree polynomial functions are a straight line. They have zero bends in it. A second degree polynomial has one band. See, it's like taking one piece of wire and bending it, a string hung between two points or an, an opening down parabola, a water fountain. A third degree polynomial, it's not surprising, there's two bends. Do you see them there? There's one band, it's a bending down, and this piece is a bending up. An important uh, caveat to this is that some of the bends can happen at just one point. For example, uh, x to the fourth power, it looks like it only has one band. 
really what's happening is it bends up here, and then there's a bend down right there at the zero, and then it bends up again. But in general, a fourth degree polynomial, if we expanded this particular expression, it would be a fourth degree polynomial. Do you see the bends? There's one bend right there. There's a second bend right there. It's a little hard to tell where the bending changes. Somewhere in here called an inflection point. It changes, and there's the bend up. So it's got one, two, three bends. That, but in general, that bending rule gives you an idea of the shape that a polynomial function should have. The second big thing that you should know is what the end behavior is. And the end behavior says this. If you look at the leading coefficient, that's the coefficient on the highest degree, that in the end, when you move over here far to the right, then the function will, if the leading coefficient is positive, it will be going up. The combination of knowing that bending rule and that end behavior rule gives you a lot of feel for what the graph of a polynomial function is going to be. Okay, a lot more for us to learn. The bending rule and that end behavior rule gives you a general shape of what the function is, and then you can start to consider, well, where's the y-intercept? That's very easy to find. The x-intercept is harder to find, but if we could see the graph of the function, we might be able to, to guess, at least, at where that graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, a lot to do this week. Good luck.